Hey everyone, this is sort of a uh, demonstration slash explanation on uh, the script I've set up, the package I've put up on the Unity Asset Store that lets you set far clipping distances manually for each of your each of your layers. This is the script here that does all the magic. It's the manual camera clipping script. So you'll just apply that to one camera or whatever, however many cameras you want to use it on. It just unlocks a little bit of extra functionality that, that was there, but previously you had to code it in yourself. And uh, it's not very well very well advertised, actually. I'll, I'll get to that in a bit. But this script's going to be in your scripts folder, uh, probably underneath a, a separate, uh, separate folder in here, just with the package name on it. There will also be two other scripts. I'm going to try to keep this light, so I'm not going to include a demo scene or anything. You'll just have to reference this video or send me an email if you want any questions, because I don't want to load up your, your project with a bunch of assets and materials and stuff. So also within the scripts folder, underneath the custom attributes folder, there's a read-only in inspector attribute that I've, that I've created here. So it doesn't really do anything, but if you've ever used the range uh, attribute or the tooltip attribute or any of those things, uh, you'll kind of get what this is what this is doing. It's basically accessing a property drawer, which will be in your editor folder, uh, which will be created if you if you don't already have one. And it accesses this property drawer, and all that does is uh, makes it so you can't edit these these layer names here. So whenever you you add a layer to your project or modify the name of a layer this all gets updated in real time for you so you don't have to worry about that but uh, these are here just for labeling purposes so it's easier to find than having to reference what element zero is compared to uh, your layer numbers so there's a there's a couple things to set here there's a default that you can play with so if i if i set this to 450 you can see the the clippings coming in pretty close here and all that's doing is it's basically changing the overall far clipping distance and changing uh, changing the clip distance that you can see in all of these. Now, if I take something, let's say my long distance layer, and I make it outside of the norm, just make that crank that way, way up. Now, wh whatever I do here, it does not does not affect this at all anymore, unless I set it back manually to sync it up. Oops, unless I set it manually to sync it up, like I am right here, and then it'll, you know, it'll uh, update with everything else. Or the other thing you can do is just check off this reset defaults button, and then that brings everything back to whatever the default is at the time. So let's set it to 5,000. That's usually pretty good. Make my long distance layer basically infinite. And let's say you have some smaller objects. Uh, for me, I have these drones. I'll just bring them in. You don't really need to see them from far away because they're fairly small. Let's go take a look what happened. The biggest reason I made this script is because up till now I'd been hacking in uh, with a second camera. Like let's say I have this this terrain here, and as you'll see in a second, I've got uh, I've got a mountain off in the distance. I really want to see that mountain, but I don't want to run at one FPS because it's drawing every single piece of this this track or this glacier here. So previously I'd been putting like I am now uh, putting that that terrain on a separate layer called long distance just like I did with that uh, waypoint out there that I need to see from far away and then add a second camera that can only see that layer and set its far clipping distance really far the problem with that is I was running into some performance issues and I ran into a problem where things like shadows wouldn't uh, wouldn't render properly because of the two cameras there were a lot of other things the more I used it the more I found that it wasn't an elegant solution so now uh, can set this all up on one camera uh, even just using it just putting it on the camera and not using it for anything I didn't notice a performance hit at all so that's that's pretty good and biggest time like a another example I can think of where you'd want to do this is if you're standing on a hill kind of looking through a forest and you've got a um, you've got like a mountain in the distance now, occlusion culling obviously is, is a lot better than this. It's a lot cleaner, it's a lot faster. Uh, so you should use it whenever possible. And I actually use them both both together. But maybe you don't want to render all the trees in between you and that mountain that aren't actually being occluded. So this would, this would do that. The, those trees would clip out uh, because they're not on the long distance layer, but you could like, get the camera to render the mountain. And that's really all there is to it. I mean, 
it's pretty pretty straightforward. I made it as easy to use as possible, so you don't have to dive into the code. This is all obviously something you know. I didn't hack hack anything into the engine. This functionality was already there. Um, you'll get access to the the source code and everything, so you'll be able to tear it apart if you want and understand it a little better. But I figured uh, this is something that I can use in all my projects, and I have been using it actually. This is an old older school project, uh, just for demonstration purposes, but. I've been using this in my projects and I figured, you know, might as well throw it up in the asset store and let, let other people use it too. So if you have any questions or if you find any bugs or anything, feel free to use the, the contact form on my website or put a comment on this or whatever. I mean, I know they say the, the comments aren't for, for bug reporting. You're supposed to just review the product, but uh, for some reason you can't seem to get a hold of me through email or the contact form. I'm usually pretty quick about those. Uh, don't hesitate to leave a comment in the... Uh, on this on this product and I'll fix whatever bugs whatever bugs you find or uh, if there's any custom features you want to add you can always contact me about that too all right have a good one and uh, and enjoy